Ahoy there, fellow explorers. Ready for another deep dive. Always ready to set sail. Well, today's voyage takes us back to the world of Moana uh, with the brand new sequel, Moana 2. Ah, Moana. Yeah. Now, the original, as I'm sure you all know, was a huge hit. Oh, I mean, yeah. visually stunning, musically incredible, thanks to Lin-Manuel Miranda, you know? Oh, yeah. And really empowering with its Polynesian representation. Set a pretty high bar. For sure. So, you know, the, the question is, does Moana 2 reach those same heights? Mm -hmm. Or does it kind of get lost at sea? To find out, we're diving into a review titled, rather fittingly, Lost at Sea. Moana 2 drifts in familiar waters. Oh, ominous. So let's see what we uncover. Hidden treasures or maybe a few shipwrecks along the way. Right. What's the review's take? Well, it's interesting. The review doesn't completely trash the film. Okay. It does acknowledge that it looks amazing, especially the water. The water, huh? Oh, yeah. The water effects are incredible. But the main critique is that Moana 2 lacks that creative spark, that narrative depth we got in the original. I see. The plot, you see feels a lot like a repeat. Really? Moana leaving the island again, new allies and villains popping up, right. and then this big showdown with some powerful force of nature. Like they took the first film structure and just sort of tweaked it a little. So familiarity isn't always a good thing then? Well, familiarity can be comforting, sure, but the review suggests that here it comes at the expense of real innovation. Hmm. Surprises. Interesting. Makes you think about sequels in general, right? Absolutely. Especially to films people loved as much as Moana. Mm -hmm. There's that balance, wanting something new, something fresh, right? but also holding on to the things that made us connect with the original in the first place. Yeah. So is having a similar plot automatically bad? Not necessarily. No. Yeah. But the review seems to say that Moana 2 relies a little too much on what we already know. Instead of going somewhere new, like setting sail on this grand adventure, only to find yourself back at the same old docks. Yeah, I see what you mean. But hey, at least Moana's pig, Pua, gets more screen time <laughs> this time around. I mean, did we even miss Pua in the first film? Or were we just so caught up in everything else that it didn't even register? That's a really good point. It speaks to that, that power of nostalgia, right? Yeah. That wanting for something familiar, something comfortable. Maybe the filmmakers were playing it safe a bit. Safe. Hesitant to stray too far from what worked the first time around. This idea of playing it safe, it seems to be a bit of a running theme in the review, actually. Okay. And it goes beyond just the plot. Mm. The visuals, too. There's this one dreamlike sequence, very brief, that hints at a more adventurous style visually. Mm. But for the most part, the animation sticks to a very safe, albeit beautiful, formula. I see. Think about the first Moana, the way the ocean was animated. Right. It, it was groundbreaking. It felt like a character in itself. It really did. Here, the water is gorgeous, no doubt, but it's more of a backdrop. We don't get that same level of connection or innovation. It makes you wonder, does that affect how much we enjoy the film? Are we less invested in Moana's journey this time because of it? Interesting. Something to consider, for sure. And it's not just the visuals, this playing it safe thing. It kind of carries over to the music, too. The review points out that Lin-Manuel Miranda isn't involved this time around. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, his style was such a big part of what made the original so charming, so memorable. Definitely. The new songs, they're okay, pleasant enough, mm -hmm. but they just don't have that same impact, that emotional depth, those catchy hooks. Yeah. There's one song, Beyond, it's mentioned in the review, and it comes across as a weaker attempt to recapture the magic of songs like, you know, How Far I'll Go from the first film. Oh, I see. Like, they tried to copy the formula without really understanding what made those original songs so special. Hmm, yeah. It makes you wonder if trying to recreate the magic of Moana, if that actually holds the sequel back from being its own thing, you know? That's a really interesting point. And, you know, speaking of missed opportunities, what about all the new characters they introduce? Oh, yeah. The review mentions a few that sound intriguing, but they don't really get much screen time. Yeah, that's a shame. Matangi, for example. Mm -hmm. She's described as this mysterious figure connected to Maui somehow. Right. And the review suggests she could have been a fantastic villain. Mm. You know, someone to add more layers to the story. Mm -hmm. But she's barely there gone almost as quickly as she appears. Yeah, it does leave you wanting more. It does, like all this potential just wasted. For sure. And then there's Nalo, the lightning god. We never really learned why he does what he does. Hmm, interesting. All these characters with these cool backstories, 
they could really push Moana 2 beyond the first film. You know, I agree. Given it its own identity, mm-hmm. instead it feels like all these missed opportunities, like seeds planted but never allowed to grow. It's almost like they were so focused on retreading familiar ground that they didn't see the potential in the new stuff they were adding. Yeah. Even Moana's new crew, the human sidekicks, they could have brought some fresh perspective, some humor, but they're totally forgettable. Right. And hey, 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 the chicken. Oh yeah, he was hilarious in the first one. Stole the show, but. He's barely in this one. Really? That's a bummer. It is. All these unexplored characters, storylines, they could have been what made Moana 2 truly unique, truly deep. Yeah. Instead, it seems like they chose comfort and familiarity over taking risks and exploring new territory. It's funny, isn't it? Because this whole playing it safe idea, it kind of goes against everything Moana stands for. How so? Well, think about her journey in the first film. She had to defy expectations, go beyond what she knew, embrace the unknown. Right. She had to trust her gut, take risks, forge her own path. That's what made her journey so powerful, so inspiring. It made us, the audience, want to set sail on our own adventures, embrace the unknown, Mm -hmm. discover new horizons. Wouldn't it have been amazing if Moana 2 had done the same? It would have been incredible. That's what made the first film so groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a visual spectacle. It was a story that pushed us to step outside our comfort zones and embrace those challenges that come with forging our own path. And maybe that's where Moana 2 falters. It Mm. focuses too much on trying to recreate the magic of the first film instead of venturing into new territory, both with the story and the themes. Right. Like setting sail on a voyage where the route's already mapped out. No room for spontaneity. No letting the winds of creativity and exploration guide you. It really does make you think, huh, what if Moana 2 had taken a cue from Moana herself? Mm-hmm. You know, embraced that whole wayfinder spirit. What if they, like, really challenged her expectations, surprised us with unexpected turns, introduced characters and stories that built on the world we loved from the first film, but took it somewhere new? Yeah, what if? The review does mention a few good things, of course. Oh, right. Ollie Cravalho, she's still amazing as Moana. Oh, she's fantastic. Her voice, you you can really hear Moana's determination, her heart, in every line. Mm. And the film keeps celebrating Polynesian culture, which is always awesome to see. Absolutely. But even with those positives, it's hard to shake the feeling that Moana, too, just plays it too safe, you know? Right. Chooses familiarity over trying something bold. It's like they were so caught up in trying to bottle that lightning from the first film, they missed the chance to find a new kind of magic. Mm -hmm. Real growth, whether it's for Moana or for a film franchise, it comes from pushing those boundaries, taking risks, discovering new perspectives. Yeah. It comes from leaving the familiar behind and embracing the unknown, even if that means hitting some rough seas along the way. And that's what I'd like you all to think about. If you were the one steering Moana 3, where would you take her? Mm. What new challenges would you throw her way? What new characters, new themes would you bring in? What risks would you take to make a sequel that not only honors what came before, but carves out its own path? Something unique, something memorable. What would it take for Moana 3 to truly embody that Wayfinder spirit? That's a fantastic question to leave us with, isn't it? It is. What would it take for Moana 3 to capture that sense of adventure, that willingness to explore the unknown that made the original so captivating? What uncharted waters should Moana navigate? What new horizons await? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Maybe together we can help chart a course for Moana 3 that leads to a truly epic, unforgettable voyage. Until then, fellow explorers, keep exploring, keep discovering, and keep those wayfinding spirits alive.